I'm sure there is a Welsh word for Conway, like David. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. I believe we're in a position to start the meeting and welcome to the uh, meeting on March the 21st of the uh, Democratic Services Committee. And uh, we'll start off with apologies. Uh, Richard, are you clerking this meeting or is it Nicola? I'm here. I believe Nicola. it's Nicola. Yeah. Nicola, right. Thank you, Nicola. Are we've there any apologies that no, you're aware Chair, of? We've not had any apologies. No apologies, right. So uh, that's uh, always good. Chair, uh, um, if I just may interrupt, you said the 21st of March is actually the 15th. Absolutely right. I'm a week ahead Sorry. of myself. Thank you, Jamie. That was my deliberate mistake. You've passed the test. Uh, right, we'll move on to declarations of interest then. And are there any declarations of interest that would be above and, ab and beyond what we would normally have to uh, declare in this case? As and when, Chair. Certainly, thank you. And are there any members of the public then that uh, are going to uh, make a contribution to our public open forum, Nicola? No, Chair. No, right. OK, then we'll move on to item four on the agenda, which is the Independent Remuneration Panel for Wales Annual Report. Now then, Matt, is it you that or is it John that's um, doing this one? John, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, a quick and simple report uh, for members, really. Um, we received the draft Independent Remuneration Panel Report I think it was back in October time um, and this is just publication of their final report for the next council term. Um, no, no changes between the draft report and the final report. The biggest change in there is that the cap on um, care allowance has been removed and some, some big changes in terms of how members can apply for that. Um, but otherwise, it's it's as the draft report was back in October, so we're just bringing it for you to to formalise and close off the loop, really. So, if if, if members have got any questions, I'm happy to take them. Um, but really, it's just a, a for information, and so you're aware of of what the remuneration will be for the next term. Okay, thank you, John. Members, any questions? I see no hand has been raised. Uh, so, um, can I assume that there's no questions, or is there somebody who wants to ask anything, of John? Right, OK then, so um, we'll move on and accept that report and move on to item five, which is hybrid meetings and area committees. And I'm assuming that as Matt has appeared on my screen, he's dealing with this one. Thank you, Matt. Thank you very Chair, much. Chair, Absolutely be, seamlessly, uh, seamlessly done. In. Sorry. Uh, could, could I just ask that we see your uh, gorgeous face on screen? We, we can hear you, but we can't see you. All oh, right, I don't know why. Sorry, Matt. I, I can see. Or maybe it's just me. I don't know. Yeah, I can uh, see him. Yeah. Yeah, you're on. You're on screen. Fine, chair. From my point of view. Okay. Thank you. Too no, much. It's, it's obviously just me. Then I, I, I. For some reason, I'm not allowed to see you. <laughs> Martin, if you're that keen, I'll send you a postcard. <laughs> okay. Over to you, Matt. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much, chair. Uh, good afternoon, uh, members. Uh, Matthew Gatehouse, head of. Well, actually, as of um, as of a few weeks' time, a, a new. A new title, um, head of uh, policy, performance, and scrutiny. Following the the changes agreed at uh, at council last week, it'll take me a few weeks to get used to to saying that. Um, paper before you today is on hybrid meetings and area committees. Uh, you recall at the the last meeting of this committee, there was a discussion regarding potential timescales for the for the restarting of area committees, uh, which. Unlike all of the other the, the meetings, uh, be they decision making, scrutiny, or, or sort of quasi uh, quasi judicial, like planning and um, and licensing, those have all restarted. Our area committees have have yet to restart. Uh, so we at the last committee, the discussion around how that would be done, the potential timescales for for doing so, and as this is intertwined with. Um, probably where we are at the moment as an organisation on the consideration of, of you know, hybrid meetings, which have been uh, paused following some initial work in the autumn. It, it seemed a good opportunity to bring two of these issues together for, for a wider debate. And um, I'll, I'll just sort of run through some of the issues in the report. And I'll also draw members' attention um, to 
some correspondence you will have received uh, in the last couple of hours from John Pearson uh, in response to a, a survey that went out to all members on the topic of um, of hybrid meetings. But but firstly, I, I'll just kind of highlight some of the issues in the in the report before you today. So it, it's sort of an opportunity to, to discuss that issue of hybrid meetings, uh, the meetings which should be prioritised for, for restart and also the topic of of area committees. Um, so I'll just kind of run through some of the issues before uh, returning to the, the recommendation, if you're, you're happy with that, Chair. Certainly. Thank um, you, Matt. Matt. So, yeah, just to be sort of um, absolutely clear, you know, this this council following the, the, the pandemic in uh, the, first, the pandemic back in March and the first lockdown, March 2020, uh, Monmouth was fairly quick to, to restart its, its decision making meetings. And well, the, the coronavirus regulations meant we didn't have to live stream or, or open those up to the, the public. Uh, in accordance with our value of, of openness, we, we rapidly returned to, to live streaming of, of meetings. Uh, and while that hasn't been without some of it, some problems as we've sort of adjusted to the, the, the use of, of technology, the, the work of, of John and, and colleagues in the Democratic Services team has, has enabled us probably to be ahead of the game in terms of opening those up, live streaming the, the meetings and enabling enabling remote attendance. Now, you know, within that time, we have had problems. So things like public open forums, there have been issues when we've had attendees who are not on the Monmouthshire network. So some meetings, for example, select committees where we have co-opted attendees have had to be recorded and uploaded um, because it's not been possible to, to run a sort of live streamed meeting with multiple external attendees. And that has some uh, sort of implications for for the return of, of area committees uh, and means it's not been sort of possible to, to do that quickly because as we all know, one of the important things about area committees is that that sort of interaction uh, between county councillors, town councils, community groups and, and members of the public that all come together to, to talk about local issues. Um, Jim, just just pausing, can I just check that I am uh, I am on screen at the moment? I've just seen a, a message from Councillor Groundcott. You are yeah, on my screen, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. seen North screen as well. On. There we go, sorry. Yeah, it just seems to be me, Matthew, uh, and that's why I put that in the chat bar there see what's what's going on with my uh, laptop here well there we go i'm uh, i'm normally quite happy to to remain uh, invisible at, at least until uh, i can get booked in for a, for a haircut appointment after the uh, easing of the, the regulations at, at some point my hair is going to start to disappear off the top of the screen um so just to uh, just to sort of re return to that um topic so you know the area committees are, are the last thing that, that have yet to be to be reintroduced. Uh, I've had a, an exchange with all of the, the chairs of the, the area committees and there re remains a strong appetite for free area committees to, to restart. Um, and you know, notwithstanding some of, of the, the value placed upon them traditionally in terms of being the interface between the, the strategic and the, the local, they also potentially have a part to play as we uh, implement the new local government and elections Wales Act, which places a duty on local authorities to, to encourage participation in, in local government. And of course, area committees are, are one of the, the mechanisms by which we, we do that. Now, this, I think if I just sort of cheer for me, just briefly sort of touch upon the, the, the recommendation at this stage, and we'll sort of broaden it out as well to talk about some of the, the hybrid meetings. Um, Presently, we have different approaches in place to the area committees uh, around the county, which members will recall um, uh, are aligned to a pilot approach that was taken in, in North Monmouthshire, what used to be Brinnacombe, whereby community councillors and town councillors in that area are voting members of those committees. And in that part of the, the county, it was determined that the area committees would be the only mechanism by which the local authority would engage with community groups, whereas in other areas there's more of a, of, of a patchwork approach. Now, a, a report went back uh, following the conclusion of, of the pilot to the, the North Monmouthshire Area Committee, but, but it, was, it was inconclusive. So where we are at the moment is this slightly differing uh, position of the, of the area committees. 
So one of the things uh, we, we propose in this paper is that a, a subgroup or, or working group of, of this committee um, takes a look at that issue of area committees and whether the approach that's taken in, in North Monmouthshire should be rolled out to the other committees, uh, whether North Monmouthshire should, should revert to the same arrangements as the, the other committees, i.e. Uh, town and community councils that are, are not voting members, or that we continue with a, with a hybrid position of slightly different arrangements in in each of the each of the areas, and uh, you know, given given what we've experienced over over the last year, the the involvement of, of committees in shaping communities, that that sort of renewed desire for for in, involvement and, and participation, coupled with the the local government and elections act changes, it seems an opportune time to to sort of properly consider. Um, this question as the the council looks to, to restarting area committees. Uh, and the, the other element uh, to this from from the officer, the officer side is, is just one of the things we are very conscious of is capacity and capacity in particular in the run up to the the Senate elections and police and, and crime commissioner elections because working and running meetings remotely using technology as, as we're all conscious of in, in today's meeting. We have multiple officers in, whereas often we would have one because it just takes a little bit more capacity and resource to support remote working. The true would be same of, of, of area committees. And again, it's the same team that, that are working and preparing in, in the run up to, to an election, again, in, in difficult circumstances. So, um, what the paper proposes is that a, a working group or a subgroup of, of this committee be be set up to, to look at the question of area committees, potentially run a, a pilot arrangement using sort of remote attendance and, and hybrid approaches and to see how that works with external or non, um, you know, the, with the, the county councillors alongside the community and town councillors and, and other reps, how that works with the technology. And that would inform um, some recommendations in terms of uh, the rollout, how area committees are are taken uh, are taken forward. Uh, and alongside uh, uh, alongside this, and, and just a sort of final final input from 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 myself, um, John, on the subject of, of hybrid meetings, has shared this survey with all members around um, what members feel should happen in terms of returning to physical meetings when coronavirus regulations permit, uh, the extent to which we should be balancing physical attendance with remote attendance. Uh, and, and that sort of questionnaire has, has just enabled us to get a bit of a, a snapshot of, um, of the views of members on the, on the, various, um, on the various inputs there. And, and Chair, with, with your permission, uh, I just sort of asked John whether there's anything in, in particular we'd be wanting to to highlight from from that report before before opening up the the discussion. Yeah, by all means, thank you, John. Thanks, Matt. Um, yeah, I think just just before I go on to the the, the responses we've had um, and some and, and trying to address some of the issues Matt has mentioned there in terms of live streaming and the end sort of the area committees and things like that. Um, the, the local government and, uh, and elections Wales Act required at one point um, local authorities to stream any public meeting that it, it was holding. So we would have to stream area committees, which we don't currently do, um, and any other committee where um, the public would, would be invited, we'd, we'd have to live stream. That requirement's been removed now, so, so the requirement for us to live stream area committees isn't, isn't there. Um, so I think in terms of, of re-establishing those meetings, they wouldn't be live streamed, which would hopefully reduce some of the issues that we've found um, with having external participants in them. Um, and just on, on the survey that went around, um, the majority of responses in the survey are um, flexibility was the key, key sort of theme I could pull out of it. Um, members want to have the option of whether they come in to the building, whether they take part remotely. Um, when I, one bit I was keen to sort of try and tease out the members was whether there should be a limit on the number of remotees that we have within a meeting, just for the from a chairing perspective, and whether um, 
you know, the, the, the members physically in the room would feel that they need a certain number of members in the room with them to make it worthwhile. Um, but majority of responses seem to be that um, we, we, we don't have a limit. We open it up as much as possible and we leave it up to members to participate in meetings however they, they want to, whether that's in person or, or remotely. Um, I think one of the things that, that are going to be difficult to manage is everybody's expectations. Um, you know, there, there's a few members who respond saying we have to be in the chamber, all all members. It's not going to be the case. So what are what are they going to get? For those members who want to be in the chamber with everybody else, what are they going to get? What is it? What is it they going to expect from a meeting when they've still got to have people remoting in? Will it make more sense for them to remote in the meetings, etc.? Um, but I think it gives us a good snapshot of 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 what members' expectations are going forward. Um, as things stand, the, the council chamber is currently out of action. Some of the parts of, of uh, well, let's say, past their sell by date in, in the chamber and are, and are being refurbished at the minute. Um, so the only option to us in terms of bringing members back into the county hall is to use some of our meeting rooms. We use that successfully at licensing, uh, the licensing subcommittee uh, last week, and it worked really well. So we could have a couple of rooms with members in three or four members per room and still have people remoting in. But for some of the smaller committees, say if we had a, um, a select committee and we've got nine members on a select committee, only two or three actually want to come into County Hall for it, then that would be a better option going forwards than it would be booking a whole council chamber out for just two members to potentially come in. So it, there isn't going to be one definitive answer, I don't think, going forward. I think we're going to have to consider it in terms of what's on the agenda, um how it's going to be debated how many members want to come in what the public interest is um, and work it all back from from there but one key thing i think as well that we've got to take away is that we still need a full chamber with full seats for all members because there will be a time when everybody wants to come in and have that debate face to face so we're not losing that um, that will still be in place and as part of the refurbishment we'll be catering for the extra three councillors in the council chamber as well. Um, but we'll be building in the flexibility to allow us to adapt however it is we, we go about meetings in the future. OK, thank you, John. Anything else, Matt, from you before we open it up for um, questions from members? No, nothing um, further from me, Chair. Happy to respond to, to any questions from, from members and um, yeah, uh, over for, uh, for the discussion with, you, with your permission. Certainly. And thank you, Matt. And thank you, John. Uh, any members with any questions from members, rather? Dave Evans, I think, was. Thank you, thank you Chair. Um, I um, hope just listened to what's been said. And I've been one of the ones who's been itching to get back into the chamber because um, I th think a meeting face to face is better than a remote. But I, I understand a remote meeting is better than nothing. Um, my concerns are um, we are looking at this now and I think that we could leave the area committee starting up until after the AGM in May. Uh, and that would give uh, democratic services uh, a bit of breathing space and, and a bit more time uh, to get things sorted out. Um, coming in, I don't think we can do it all in one go. Um, I think we could break it down and some of the smaller committees um, come in face to face um, and um, and, and work it from there. I, I don't disagree with what John said. Some members might want to come in, some members might not want to come in for whatever reason, um, and that would be up to the individual. Um, but I think we should be looking to be um, trying to phase this in after the AGM in May. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you, Dave. Uh, right, there's uh, a few hands being raised. Thank you for, for that. And Maureen, welcome to the meeting. And um, you can't find the hand up um, or raise hand function. So let's go with you first then, shall we? Uh, 
Thank you very much, Chairman, and thank you for allowing me to come into this meeting. The reason I asked to come in is because, as, as of the moment, until anything alters, I'm Chairman of the North Monmouthshire Area Committee, and I feel quite strongly about trying to keep the Area Committee uh, in our end of the uh, county anyway, because it is the one place where the local people do have a chance to interact with the councillors and, and to put forth their, their ideas and wishes. And uh, um, I'd be very pleased if we could continue to have the area committees. Um, on the other hand, talking about whether we should be remote or live on all the other meetings, I think we're going to have to have a, a mixture. Some people um, uh, would rather do it remote and some people would rather come in. At least while we've been remote, we've had very good attendance at uh, meetings, which may fall away again if we went um, live all the time. Um, so I think it, 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 have, a, have a, a mixture of remote and live, and then hopefully we'll keep having many people at the meetings. But thank you for that anyway. OK, thank you, Maureen. Right, we'll go on to the um, a list of raised hands. Giles Howard, the, your top of the list, the list I've got anyway. Oh, thank you, Chair. Um, I think we're probably going to have slightly different takes on, on what we think is the, the, the best approach. But first, in, in terms of the area meetings, um, I, th I, I think that perhaps if we could encourage some virtual involvement in those meetings, uh, it might better serve the, the purpose of, 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 of having them. Um, as, as I've said before, and I'm sorry for saying it again, the area meetings we've had uh, in, in, in the past, well, since they were set up, have touched a minute proportion of the, the population. Um, I dread to think how few um, or how unrepresentative of the, the wider public in our areas that, that has, has been. And I just think, well, perhaps if we can enable the, the virtual attendance to members of the public and indeed third parties, that perhaps uh, mitigates the issues of going from one village hall to another, particularly in the areas in, in, in North Mon. I know it's a little bit different maybe for the seventh side where you've got Caldecott as a main settlement and things are um, perhaps um, a, a little bit closer and, and more convenient. But for you know, if we're going to, to Grosmont for one meeting, Gill one to another, then to Lenella and Lanvar Kilgedin, and if you've got somebody who wants a member of the public who lives in the opposite area from where that meeting is going to take place, then that's a, a, a real pain in the backside to attend that. If the, First of all, they've got to have their own um, vehicle and due to the time of the meeting, they may need to take time off work. And certainly I've found at, at, at the moment I'm carrying on with my work in, in, in the background and, in, and, and taking part in the meeting at the same time. I don't do that for, for everyone because it, it, it depends on the on the topic, but it just makes it that much more flexible for people outside of the, the um, council to, to, to have, have some input. And so I think regardless of, of when and where they start, if we can enable that in the future, I think that would be great. And that then goes back to the, the, the question of where do we have the meetings in the future uh, when we do meet again physically and providing we can um, en enable that electronic access, then I wonder what is the point of going to, to all these disparate locations and wouldn't it be better, given that um, it, although we're not going to be required to be beneficial to stream the meetings, if you could have a, a fixed spot such as a town hall or even the dusk, that actually might um, so the purpose of the committee better than everything we've been doing in the last, um, how long have we done area committees now? Is it 2004 they came in? The last 17, 18 years. So that's that's, that's the first thing. Um, and, and Dave, uh, I, I agree with his comments about when we should start the, the physical meetings for the smaller committees like this one and the, the, the selects planning as well. There's enough space in the chamber for everybody else to be able to, to um, so I was looking at this message in the corner of the screen there to to be able to socially distance. Um, but even if we're um, in, in a meeting with, with planning and with licensing, it may be better for a member of the public, the, the neighbour of a development, somebody applying for a licence, they may feel far more comfortable in attending electronically, even if we're sat in the chamber, because it, it can be really daunting. Um, you know, sometimes even if you're a if member, if it's out of your comfort zone and you're speaking somewhere new or there's a crowd of people, you might not give you the, the, the same sort of uh, quality of input that you, you would perhaps electronically. And I just think, well, is that better then, even if we're in, in place to, to allow the third parties to come in electronically? Um, 
personally speaking, my preference is always to to meet in person. And when we can do that at full council, I think you get an awful lot more from the debate. You don't pick all the, the nuances up individually. You don't have the, the repartee. You don't pick up sort of anecdotal information that you, you might share with, with, a, with a colleague at a, at a council meeting. Um, but I, I think this, this certainly for the public and, and third party point of view, there's an argument for enabling um, virtual attendance on a, on a permanent basis. And I, I, I know if, if perhaps it won't be something that you've, you've experienced, and I don't know if it's the case in the in the, in the Labour Party, but certainly um, in, in ours in an, in an area basis, um, the the advent of virtual meetings has resulted in, in, in far better attendance, which makes me think that that would apply to, to area meetings as well. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot to consider, but I don't think the answer is straightforward, but I think some virtual attendance for, for public is, is probably a a, a, a good path to follow, regardless of whether we're back in, in County Hall. Uh, thank you, Chair. OK, thank you, Giles. Uh, we move on to the next raised hand then from Joe Watkins. Joe. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, Giles has said most of what I was going to say um, really well, um, so I won't duplicate what he said, but um, I will um, really emphasise the fact that we do need to find new ways to get the public to join in in our meetings. Um, it's been a top hot topic for me, as everyone knows, um, and I think, yes, doing something virtual, allowing the public to virtually attend in some capacity would really potentially help that a lot. Um, also, if we're going to be looking at it, then let's look at the times of day for area meetings. And 10 o'clock in the morning is that not a great time if you're a working person to attend a, a council related meeting. Most public meetings happen in the evening. So would would area committees be the one thing that we should move to being an evening meeting since we haven't moved any of the other ones to that? Um, and then the one slightly more procedural thing I would say is that if we are going to have a hybrid meeting with some people in the building in USK and some people attending remotely, then I kind of feel like the chair would need to be in the in-person meeting. So that would then obviously be a requirement on the chair being comfortable mm -hmm. as well. Otherwise, that would actually be quite difficult. So um, other than that, as, as everyone has said, we were all, all desperate to get back to full council and have our debates face to face and um, and all the quiet debates that we have when we're not on camera as well. And um, and it would be really good to get there, but but we have to be practical as to what the circumstances are for the time being. But I also definitely agree with what Dave said in that we shouldn't be rushing officers to try and do this before um, the Senate elections have gone through. So maybe after the AGM would be a better time to look at this. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you, Joel. Uh, Sheila. Sheila Woodhouse. Thank you, Chairman. A lot of what I was going to say has already been said, but I would like to point out that the Council have come a long way with these remote meetings since when you think back to this time last year, the circumstances that led to us um, participating in these remote meetings. We were one of the first councils to do so, to have our um, full Council meetings. Uh, you know, to recommence our full council meetings and other committees. So we, we've reviewed it. Officers have worked extremely hard. Members have adapted and, and really got on well with this. So it's a bit like trying to arrange um, a suitable time for people to, to meet. When we have the calendar of diaries every year at full council, there's always lots of different uh, views on what times the meeting should take place. It's very difficult to please everybody. And I'm pleased to see the review that went out that there's been some good responses. But um, the, the overall response was that we, have, we are flexible. We allow members to choose and have that the choice of whether to come into to County Hall in due course or request to come in uh, as, as things unlock and we're you know, able to do so safely. So I think it's very important that we, we to highlight the fact that we've always been flexible. This council has always reviewed things a bit like the constitution. It's up for review. We've, we've discussed things in the past at these meetings uh, about how uh, about uh, say meeting start times, for example, that, that can be reviewed. And as long as people, if we want to make it attractive to people to stand for council, then we need to, to, to focus on the fact that the and get the message over that we can change things. It's not all going to be set in one direction and that's it for the next five years that things are constantly reviewed and that, that's a key message with this so i think yes give people choice we i would like to suggest with regard to the area committees that um the 
subgroup that, that the chairs of the sub of the um, existing area committees or, or, or whoever's appointed after next May uh, be part, or perhaps the current ones would be better for the time being be invited to take part in the subgroup because they know what their area committees um, that the the obstacles they know what the what the public attendance has been like and we've always been looking to improve public attendance at, at area committees they are important committees and as Giles quite clearly um, described all the various venues that we've used in the past for that very reason and I think that needs to be that can be looked at as part of this um, subcommittee so I I just want to suggest that the chairs of the area committees are because they're not necessarily members of this committee could be invited along but it's flexibility is the key and also the fact that we've had very good attendance at the remote meeting so that's a really good indicator that a lot of members as the survey has pointed out would like to continue with that and yes please give people a choice thank you okay thank you sheila uh, we'll move on to councillor martin glucos thank you very much chair and um, incidentally i am now able to see you in full glory as technical uh, the suggestion I should leave the meeting and come back in, uh, there you were. I, I did suspect that if I left the meeting, it would be a ploy to not, not let me back in again. But, <laughs> but um, th there we are, I'm, I'm just a distrustful person. Um, I, I, I would like to raise uh, two uh, other issues around uh, remote working, if, if I may. Um, the first, I think, is that um, most of the discussions that we've had about working remotely have, have been phrased within the context of uh, the pandemic, and, and probably quite rightly so. Uh, I would like to suggest that there are actually other reasons why remote working into the future would be very effective. Um, and, and the main reason is that as a county council, we have declared a climate emergency and that <clears throat> as a result of that, uh, doing all we can to reduce our carbon footprint. Now, um, County Hall has, has many benefits, but it is also a fact that it is in a rural location um, and therefore members need either to uh, put on some hiking boots to get there or virtually always have to drive. Um, in my particular case, that's around journey of 26 miles in my car every time I come to County Hall. Some of the meetings I attend last under 30 minutes. Uh, and when you add every other member of the council who serves on different committees, to that sort of figure that I'm suggesting affects me, then we're actually coming to a lot of a lot of people driving a lot of miles and polluting the atmosphere. We should be able to do it by public transport, and I would be the first to support that. But the reality is there County Hall is served by one bus route, which is extremely infrequent and runs from either uh, Pontypool or Cumbran to Chepstow. So for the majority of members of this council, it would not be a viable way to get to County Hall. So while we have to come to County Hall, it means virtually we have to come by car. Um, the second new thing I'd like to throw into the mix is the cost. I know the report that we've had today talks about remote meetings being expensive, um, but, but set aside the savings from mileage, I would suggest that there would be considerable saving there. I, I don't think I lose anything by listening to the arguments that have been put forward so eloquently this afternoon by seeing them on my laptop rather than hearing them in person in County Hall. Yes, I accept that there is a case for live meetings, and I think very few of us would suggest the county council itself, when it meets, should do so remotely. But meetings such as this, and, and the vast majority of other meetings, I think um, would not suffer from being remote, 
whereas our carbon footprint could be fairly dramatically reduced as an organisation and we would save quite a lot of money in terms of members' expenses. So I think it's not just coronavirus that should prompt us to look at this, but I think there are very strong other arguments to add to the, the balance as well. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you, Martin. Was there anybody else that wanted to make a contribution to the debate? Right. In which yes, case, John? Yes, please, Chairman. Oh, so, uh, Peter Clark, I think it was the voice then that I heard. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Yes, I did try to get in, but it didn't work. Um, can I make a particular plea for planning? Um, not only do we have to talk to each other, we have to look at drawings. And a drawing produced on a small screen as we're on today, it really just doesn't do justice uh, to the application before us. And in order that our uh, uh, population get proper treatment, I must make a special plea that planning is back in that chamber at the earliest at the earliest possible time. Also, when we had a from you remember from uh, the uh, meeting last Thursday, we've had some ups and downs uh, regarding delegation panels and that has only been brought about by misunderstanding because we try to deal with it remotely and all these things can be more easily resolved when we are all together as a committee. So I would make a particular plea uh, that the planning committee are back in that chamber at the very earliest moment. There are only 15 or 16 of us when we're all there together with officers and the, the chamber is quite capable of handling that with us being socially distanced. So I would make a plea for planning. Thank you, Chairman. OK, thank you, Councillor Clark. And um... Is there anybody else? Sorry, have I missed anybody or not been able to raise the hand? Or, um... OK, John, did you want to come back? Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, I think it's just a couple of bits. And I think it's, this shows probably why we, we might need a subcommittee meeting on area committees and hybrid meetings, because there's, there's I've heard quite a lot of, 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 of good stuff there, but there's almost a but attached to quite a few of them. Um, so, for, for example, then if we come back to the area committee issue and having a place where we're actually going to hold the meeting, um, we're probably limited to maybe two or three buildings in Monmouthshire, I would say at the minute, that will probably be capable of hosting a meeting and receiving all those people who want to take part remotely, because if the technology isn't in that building where we're going to hold, hold the meeting, um, then it doesn't matter how many people we've got attending virtually from the public or from the members side that the transmission just isn't going to go through properly into that 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 meeting space um so again it's just exploring and understanding the, the some of the the technological issues we've got in the background as well um just one point come up about chairing the meetings um and needing to be in person so the system we've come up with um, doesn't require the chair to be in the meeting space, so everything will still be done through Teams as it is now. Um, so a chair can 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 manage the meeting remotely or in attendance. Um, some of the things we're picking up in sort of the chamber refurb is how we can deal with presentations and things like that better. How is the chair at the front of the chamber going to be able to see who's actually remoting in and know when they want to come in and when they want to speak, etc. Um, so some of those things are going to be be addressed. Uh, as well, um, but again, it's just that coming back again to that to that last point there from from Councillor Clark as well, that the the Corona uh, local government um, and Elections Wales Act legislation says that we have to allow remote attendance no matter what. Um, so it, it's managing that expectation that yes, we could still get the majority of members back in the chamber, but remote attendance is here to stay. Um, and we've got to factor that into the into the process of holding the meeting alongside presentations um, as well. So I can't see ever a point, I don't think anymore, where we're going to go back to fully physical meetings because one, the legislation allows it and two, I think members um, are just getting more familiar with it and more comfortable in taking part remotely. So it's just, it's just how we address that properly going forward. OK, right. So are we all happy to um, accept the suggestion in the paper that we form a subcommittee committee of members and possibly area committee chairs as well, existing ones that is, 
in order to, to move the issue forward and come up with uh, some level of conclusion. There's a yes from Councillor Watkins. Is there any dissent to that uh, suggestion? Then? It's a yes from me, Chair. Thank you. So it's a yes from two of you. Is there, are there any no's? So say it's right. yes from me too. <laughs> right, OK. So yeah. if uh, the if there's no dissent, then there's sort of an overwhelming yes, then isn't it, by, by implication, unless I've got things completely wrong. Yeah. Um, now then, uh, I suppose the next step is who would like to um, sit on the subgroup? How many uh, sort of how many members would you suggest, Matt in, or John, in terms of getting things done? The ideal number has, has been mooted as being five in some quarters, isn't it? But uh, equally, things may have moved forward since I was told that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think, um, Chair, obviously we, we'd be looking at the, the three current chairs of the, uh, the area committees. Um, I, I think probably sort of five to, to seven would be a, would be a, good, a good number. Um, can I can I suggest that perhaps following this meeting we we contact members of the the committee and just ask for expressions of expressions of interest? Right. Yeah. Um, I can see a few people sort of uh, uh, saying uh, yes in the in, in the yeah. chat bar we have here. It may be we have slightly more people than you would want on a uh, on a subgroup, but 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 equally, you know, away from the um, the, the formality of a committee meeting. A large number actually is, is quite sort of manageable over over teams, so I wouldn't suggest that the, that an upper limit is necessarily uh, is necessarily necessary. Okay, necessarily necessary. Necessarily necessary. <laughs> okay, uh, I would be quite happy to uh, offer myself, but equally, I'm quite uh, happy to stand down if there's enough people anyway. But um, uh, Councillor Trahan, you've appeared on my screen. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a good idea that the chairs of the area committees are involved uh, for their input, even though we haven't chaired a meeting for a year and we may not be chairs after the AGM, but I think our input would be beneficial. And again, um, I don't mind how many people attend the meeting um, or are part of the group, but I if if we, I, I am conscious of the Senate elections and and the police commissioners elections as well. So uh, whether we can get a meeting in before that, I don't know. But I, I'm happy for it to 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 wait until after those elections to give the officers some breathing space, if you like. Um, but I do agree that chairs should be involved. Thank you, chair. Okay, thank you, Jamie. Um, Area chairs, we've got Maureen and Jamie. Who are the others? Sorry, forgive my ignorance. It's, uh, it's myself, Ch uh, Chair. OK, thank you. And uh, there are four of them. Am I? Am I... Uh, yes, so which four uh, chair, the, the, the fourth um, area committee chair was, was Councillor Dovey. Uh, Sorry, so right. unfortunately, we, we only have um, okay, right. three chairs at present. Hence, hence why you said three. Right, my apologies. Uh, right, so um, moving forward then, uh, do we wait for um, compilation of area chairs that are, well, we've got the area chairs here, haven't we? Um, Dave Evans, Jamie Trahan and Maureen, so um, they're happy to, happy to attend and yeah, they're also members of this can, committee. So, Chair, can I suggest that uh, because of the situation uh, at Roy, below Roy, that we ask the Deputy Chair by all means, yes, totally. And who is the, the do, do we know the vice chair? Anne Webb, Anne Webb, it's in the oh. chat bar, Dave, uh, chair, sorry. Okay, thank you. Right, so Anne Webb and um, we've had expressions from myself, Giles Howard, Jamie Trahan, Ma uh, Maureen Powell, Dave Evans. So do we need any more? <laughs> any? So that that that's that's presumably better to have a, than having none or, or too many. So um, uh, Martin Ma Martin Grover as well. Right. So it's looking increasingly like the Democratic Services Committee <laughs> plus plus a vice chair. Right. Does that enable us to move on then with um, with that, uh, Matt, and um, make progress on the issue as you described, as you've suggested in your paper. Yeah, thank, thank you very much, Jay. I guess the only other um, issue just to, to touch upon for, for clarity is in terms of 
of timing. A few members have, have suggested they would be happy for this work to to wait until after the the Senate and Police and Crime Commissioner elections for just for, for reasons of, of officer capacity, really. Yeah. Uh, I just want to sort of check whether whether that is the collective view of the the committee that you would be happy with that um, happy with that to to wait a few weeks. And I can see John uh, John's coming as well, so I, I'm not sure there's anything you want to add to that, John. Um, yeah. the, the, well, the only bit I'd sort of suggest is um, we start the meetings relatively soon because um, the, the, the resource really in this is implementation and how we go about setting these meetings up and the contacts we need to get uh, with the community and town councils etc. Um, so I think from our perspective more than happy to sort of start the ball rolling in terms of how we want it to look and how it's going to look going forward um, but then actual work on setting the meetings up and getting them underway would take place after the election. OK, excellent. Right. And um, there's no well, the, the next meeting of this committee is on the 7th of June. So there's enough of a gap in between in terms of time is there between uh, the Senate and police commissioners election and the uh, next meeting. Yeah, OK, then uh, anything else to bring to the table on this issue then anyone? OK, excellent, thank you. We'll move forward to item six on the agenda then, which is elections and the discussion on elections. John, do you want to guide us with this one? Mr. Election Man? <laughs> thank you, Chair. Um, with this item, I think we're just going to, or with, with the permission of the Chair, I think we'll just leave it as a standing item now on sort of every, every Democratic Services Committee agenda uh, going forward. One of the reasons I wanted to add it in now was um, previously at a meeting during the term we sort of discussed about how we want to go about highlighting to potential candidates at next year's elections um, that timings of meetings are, aren't fixed um, and, and it's up to members to set those times of meetings so I wanted to just sort of put that out there now uh, start talking about how you want us to go about advertising that to electorate potential candidates etc um so anything on on induction um what we, what we, well last time reviewing what we did uh what we can improve on i think you know technology now here one of the biggest feedbacks we had um at, at, at every induction over the last few terms has been it's too heavy too soon we're spending too much time going into county hall for things for training sessions um how can we factor in remote training sessions then into the induction program for for next year what would work well remotely compared to what's needed um, physically and obviously you still need that physical interaction for every everyone to learn who who everybody is we have the election we don't necessarily know who gets re-elected until that that day we're back in in county hall signing the declaration of acceptance of office and and seeing faces we know and some faces we don't um, other things we want to sort of build into it are going to be how how we interact with the candidates. We normally do briefing sessions towards the end of the year um, for potential candidates, uh, just explaining the role, how the election process works, what sort of time factors are involved and, and dedication from from any new councillor who hasn't experienced it before. Um, so again, it's I think the key point here is um, how you want me to start looking at the timing of meetings issue and, and how you want to sort of um, go about publicising that to the electorate and the, and the candidates. Um, but anything else, and like I say, I think we'll leave it as a standing item on the agenda um, for all committees now going, going forward because uh, 2022 will be year before we know it. Like I say, the end of the year is when we, we start briefing our candidates. We're already talking about delaying some stuff until May and we've got a couple of months then to start putting it in place. So. Um, any feedback, anybody, any any comments anyone wants to, to give me to start thinking about and factoring into to next year's elections, then I'm happy to take them and uh, start putting a programme together. OK, thank you, John. Is there any uh, issue that is um, uh, pertinent on this matter that members would like to make known to John at this stage? Jamie, Councillor Trahan. Thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, John uh, made the point of uh, interacting with candidates uh, old and new um i didn't have that in 2017 or the or the run up to 2017 
if I knew that was available to me, it may have it may have made me less than a rabbit caught in headlights on my first day at County Hall, if you like. Uh, um, and then meeting all the officers and stuff in one day, that was quite overwhelming. So um, I think that is an important part that for potential candidates or candidates to to just have an idea of what is expected or what is the process leading up to the election, then the election, then if you get elected, as opposed to um, you're at the count, you're called forward, you're announced as the winner. Three days later, you're at County Hall. It's um, it's overwhelming, if you like, uh, for me anyway. Uh, not everybody is the same, and I think that could help people just deal with it better. Um, lower stress levels, if you like, or worry levels about how are they going to perform, how are they going to come across to their colleagues, not only their party colleagues, but council colleagues and officers. Are you going to um, embarrass yourself by things you say, questions you ask, or are those officers going to know that you are starting from the bottom rung of the ladder, you know, in respects of this, which I was. So that would be extremely helpful. Um, and I'm glad that John has mentioned that. So I just wanted to make that point. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you, Jamie. Anybody else? And I think uh, what John has already said that he wants to have this as a um, an ongoing agenda item. So uh, as things arise, they can be brought up in each meeting. But is there anybody else right now who wants to make a contribution on that score? It would appear. Oh, Jane, uh, Giles. All right, uh, yeah, I, I did put my hand up in the bar. Just a, a, a couple of things, and I, I remember the rabbit in the headlight moment as well or all those years ago and it's you, you don't realize what you've taken on really until that that first meeting and everything dawns on you that perhaps it mightn't have been such a good idea after all um but just in respect of meeting times and john alluded to and I, I i just think we need to be clear that we don't um set up some sort of false impression to potential candidates of, of what might happen regarding meeting times because they've they've mostly been at two o'clock or ten o'clock for for years regardless of the makeup of, of members and regardless of the the party that's been in control and you know as, as you know there's for various reasons some people have got other commitments in the in the evenings there's transport issues other people have got to work other people have got childcare problems but regardless of all that we've always ended up uh, with the same position of the 10 and the 2 and when we've done experiments with other hours for, some, for um, other reasons they haven't gone very well so I just I just think we need to be clear to people who who, who, who may have children or may have other things they need to, to, to balance in their lives that that where we say we, we might be able to consider flexible hours for meetings and, and, and so on that the chances are it possibly won't end up like that at all. Um, the other thing um, the induction I couldn't make last time around. I couldn't make very many of them because it clashed with work. And as Jamie said, the time scale between the election and those meetings happening is 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 very very quick, and you can't suddenly throw everything out of the out of the sink and go on to an, an, another priority. So, yeah, they could be spaced spaced out a little bit better, maybe, or have um, inductions that are really targeted only at the new members, and then maybe some that involve all of us. And the last one, and again, this is another broken record because I've said this for years as well. Can we consider providing IT to us on a basis that, that, that meets members' specific needs and not a job loss? I know there are procurement issues, but Peter um, mentioned this earlier regarding the planning meetings. And whilst the, the device is, is, is great on its own, it's small and it's light and, and it's handy, we don't carry it around an awful lot. And if you are looking at plans or even if you're trying to look at text on there, it's not great, is it? It's a, it's a very small screen. It involves a lot of scrolling or a lot of zooming in and out to see where you are. And I don't know how the members would feel. I'd rather have a massive laptop with a great screen the size of a, a, a telly, and that would suit me best. It wouldn't suit other members. So please, can we think about what members want rather than what happens to be in the, in, in the store covers or what's on offer? Um, there we are. That's all. Thanks, Chair. OK, thank you, Giles. Anybody else? And uh, I take it that uh, John and possibly Matt has uh, taken that information and uh, will will act on it immediately. Right. 
OK, then, if that's the case, then we'll move on to item seven, which is the minutes of the meeting held on the 18th of January. And uh, I hope everybody's had a chance to read them. And if so, is it your wish that they be signed as a true and accurate record of the meeting held in January? I'll move, Chair. Moved. Everybody happy? Second. Giles, thank you. So, uh, OK, we'll move that uh, they be approved and we move on to the last item, which is just to remind people that the next meeting of the Democratic Services Committee is on the 7th of June at 2 p.m. I think that's the conclusion of the meeting, unless there's anybody else wants to mention anything Excellent. socially or otherwise. Yeah, thank um, you, Chair. Well chaired again as usual. Thank you, Jamie. Very kind of you to say so. And uh, I thank everybody for their attendance and input. Thank you, officers, councillors, uh, and I thank you for your attendance and uh, wish you a safe journey home. <laughs> thank you. Cheers, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.